In this video, we're going to go over all the very best Eclipse shortcuts that you can use to be a faster Java programmer. There are some of these that once you see them in action, you'll never code the same way again. My name is John. I'm a lead Java software engineer, and I love sharing what I've learned in a clear, understandable way. So if you'd like more programming tutorials like this, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss each new video. I also have a full Java course available in the link down in the description if you're interested. First is a simple one that's really cool. Let's say you have some text in your program that you want to make all uppercase. But you know, you don't want to have to go in and retype the entire thing in uppercase. All you have to do is highlight the text and hit Control. Control shift X and poof, all that text is now uppercase. And if you want to make it all lowercase, just hit control shift Y. Next, let's say you want to print something out and you know that in Java, you have to write system.out.println, open and close parentheses, and then type out what you want to print out. Well, you actually don't have to do all that. Instead, you can just write sys out and then hit control space and it'll automatically print out that whole thing system.out.println and it'll put your cursor in between the two parentheses so you can immediately just start typing out whatever you want next let's say you're creating a new java program right and you've created your class probably the first thing you want to do is create your main method right as you probably know it's public static void main string array args and open and close curly braces but it can be tough to remember all that and even if you do who wants to write all of that out well, all you have to do is just write out the word main and then hit control space. This first option that pops up, main method, is the one you want. So just go ahead and hit enter and that'll automatically create the full shell of your main method for you. Pretty awesome. By the way, if you want to know what all this stuff and the main method actually means, check out this video all about the main method and what each piece actually does and why it's there. Similar shortcuts are available for creating all kinds of things. For example, for loops. All you have to do is just type for and then hit control space. There's a few different types of for loops available and it'll create them in kind of a smart way depending on what's in your code surrounding it. For example, let's just say you had created like a list of strings here, names, equals new array list. Then when you type four and hit control space, the options here will use that surrounding code. For example, if you hit for each to create a for each loop, it sees this list right above it called names and will automatically create a for each loop looping through each element in that names list. And you can customize whatever you like in here, like if you want to name this variable like name instead, and then hit enter and then type whatever code you want inside your for each loop. You can also create while and do while loops this way. As you might guess for a while loop, just type out while and hit control space. And you'll have a few options here. Probably the one you'll want most often is a simple while loop with a condition. It automatically creates this while loop with a placeholder condition, which you can replace with whatever you like. If you want to create a do while loop instead, just type in do and hit control space space. The do while statement will be the very first suggestion, so just hit enter to use it. Just type in here whatever you want the condition of your do while loop to be, and you're good to go. You can also make all kinds of if statements this way. Just type if and hit control space. If you just want a simple if statement, you can use that, but you can also pick an if else statement. And if you want an else if in between these conditions, you can just type in else if, and it'll give you a full else if block. This next one is one I just learned recently, but is so simple and useful. I can't believe I haven't known it for years. Let's say you've got a line of code and you want to move it somewhere just up or down a few lines in your program. Of course, you know that you can just highlight it, hit control X to cut, and then go and paste it in wherever you want in your program, right? But there's an even better way. All you have to do is go to the line that you want to move and hit alt and then the up or down arrows. That lets you freely move that line of code wherever you want in your program. And that's not just limited to one line, you can do that with multiple lines as well. So just highlight all the lines that you want to move around and hit Alt and Up or Down. Next, let's say you got a piece of code that could throw some exception. You know you'd have to create a try catch around it, right? So you'd have to say try, then you have your open curly braces, you have to go down here, okay, and then say catch, exception, E. Instead of doing all that, you can just highlight the code that you want to surround with a try catch and then hit Alt Shift Z. That'll bring up a bunch of different options of things you can surround this code with, one of which is a try catch block. So you can just click that and it'll surround that code that you've highlighted with a full try catch block. And you can surround it with other stuff too, like a while loop, a do while loop, or, or even a simple if statement. This one I remember learning back in college when we were first getting started using Eclipse. Let's say you got a really basic class, right? Like this cat class. It has three fields, name, weight, and age, but they're all private, which is fine, right? They probably should be private, but now you have to go in and create getters and setters for them. And it's not difficult, but you know, it's just kind of a slog, right? It's busy work. Okay, public string, get name, turn this dot name. Then you have to create a setter for the name too and getters and setters for the other fields. Instead of doing all of that, you can just right click anywhere in your class and then go to source 
and then Generate Getters and Setters. Then a box will pop up showing you all the different fields that you can create your getters and setters for. If you only want to create getters and setters for some fields and not others, you can go in and check some of these and not others, or just check the setters and not the getters. But most of the time, I just want to select all and create getters and setters for everything. So all you have to do is click Generate, and Eclipse will automatically create getters and setters for all of your private fields. I remember when my college professor showed us this after having us manually type out getters and setters for weeks. I about slapped him in the face for not showing this to us sooner. If you wanna be really cool and you don't even wanna right click and go through that whole menu, you can hit Alt Shift S and then R. That'll bring up this exact same menu. The same goes for having to create constructors. When you create a class like this, you might want to create a constructor that takes all three of these fields so you can set them when your cat object is created. But if you want to do that automatically, instead of typing it out, you can right click and go to source and generate constructor using fields. Same way as before, you can check whatever fields you want to have as part of your constructor and then click generate. It automatically creates a full constructor with parameters to be able to set each field. And if you want to use a keyboard shortcut instead, it'll be Alt Shift S and then O. Next, what if you're working with like a not so great programmer on a group project or something and all of their code is just formatted terribly and looks like just bleh. You can have Eclipse automatically format for you. Just highlight whatever code you want to format. In this case, it'll be everything because this is all awful. Then hit Control Shift F. Ha. <sighs> Much better. Nice and pretty and clean. Next, let's say you type out some code that uses a new class that your program isn't using yet, like this random class here. Of course, Eclipse complains to us that it can't find this random class, and that's because we haven't imported it yet. One cool thing you can do, of course, is just hover over that error and then click Import Random, and Eclipse will automatically add that to your imports. But you don't even have to do that. All you have to do is hit Control shift O, and it'll automatically optimize your imports. If there's more than one class with the same name, it won't be able to automatically decide which one to import. For example, if we got rid of this scanner import and hit Control shift o there's multiple different scanner classes in Java that it could use. In this case, the one that we want is java.util.scanner, so all we have to do is just double-click that one. If you happen to get rid of some code and no longer need an import that you needed before, when you organize your imports with Control shift o it'll also automatically remove any imports that you aren't using anymore. You can automatically comment out a line or multiple lines by just hitting control and slash. And you can uncomment those same lines by just hitting control slash again. If you want to instead make a multi-line block comment, just hit control shift slash. That'll make it a multi-line comment like this. If you want to rename a variable, you don't have to go in and change that variable every place that that variable appears. Instead, you can just select the variable that you want to change and hit alt shift R. Then you can just change the name here to whatever you want, and you can see that it automatically changes that variable name everywhere across the program. Then just hit enter and you're good to go. What if you have a huge Java file that's hundreds or maybe even thousands of lines and you want to go to a particular line? Well, you could scroll down until you get there, but if you want, you can also just hit control L. Then enter whatever line you want to go to, like 157, and hit enter, and it'll bring you directly to that line. Sometimes you may want to find a particular method in your program, but you don't remember exactly where it is. You can just hit Control O to pull up the outline of your Java program. That'll show all the different methods that are in the Java file you're looking at. If you want, you can start typing to filter that list too. If you have a big chunk of code that's kind of getting too complicated, or maybe you also want to use it somewhere else in your program, you might want to extract it to a method. Eclipse offers an automated way of doing that too. You can just highlight all of the code that you want to include in your new method and then hit alt shift m that'll pop up a dialog box for creating your new method and you can just type in whatever you want it to be named like this piece of code determines the winner of this game so we probably want to call it uh, determine winner it automatically figures out which parameters it's going to need and what the return type should be if any then you can just click OK, and Eclipse will automatically create your brand new method. Another really quick one that I use all the time is just using Control D to delete an entire row. Dead simple, but I probably use it every hour of every day. Another really useful one is if you're looking at a method and you want to know what calls this method, and then what other methods call those methods, and all the way up the tree. With your cursor anywhere inside the method, just hit Control Alt H. That'll bring up the call hierarchy, which shows the current method that we're looking at is valid move, and it also shows which other methods call this one. And you can expand each of those to see which methods call those methods. Let's say you're looking at a class like dog and you want to see the whole inheritance hierarchy above it. All you have to do is hit F4 and that brings up the entire class hierarchy. So we can see that the dog class is a child of the animal class, which is a child of the object class. If you currently have selected any sort of opening or closing curly braces or brackets or parentheses, you can hit Control Shift P 
key to automatically go to the other end. So if you're at the beginning, it'll go to the end. If you're at the end, it'll go to the beginning. That's really useful for when you're looking at like a huge method and you just want to go straight to the ending curly braces, or when the code is formatted really weirdly and you want to know where a certain section of code ends. If you want to make your font size larger, like if you need ridiculously large font size for recording a YouTube video, just hit Control plus to increase the font size and Control minus to decrease the font size. Anywhere that you're calling a method and you want to go directly to where that method is implemented, just select the method name and hit F3 to jump right to it. You can also just hold Control and click the method name to jump right to it as well. You can do similar things with variables. Let's say I've got this board variable here, right? And I want to find where it's being declared. I can just select anywhere that that variable is being used and hit F3 to jump right to where it's being declared. And just like the methods, you can Control click as well to do exactly the same thing. What if you have hundreds of Java files like I do here and you just want to find one single file and you know the name but you don't know where to find it? Well, you can just hit Control Shift R then just start typing the name of whatever file you want to find. Here we go. I found my awesome Java program. Just click it to open it. You can quickly switch between file tabs. You can just hold Control then hit page up to go backwards in tabs and page down to go forwards. Another one I use all the time. Let's say you're just writing some code in one of your Java classes and then you hop over to another Java class and start uh, making some changes there too. Well, it's very likely that you're going to want to hop right back to what you were just doing in that last Java class. Well, if you have a whole bunch of files open, it could be kind of cumbersome trying to find where you just were. Instead of having to hunt it down, you can just hit Alt and the left arrow to just jump to the last place that you were editing. And you can keep hitting Alt left to keep going further and further back in history. And to go back forward in history, just hit Alt and the right arrow key. Another awesome thing is that if your mouse has back and forward buttons like this one, you can just use those instead. You can hit back, to go back in history and forward to go forward. Without even having to use your other hand, I use that all the time and it's awesome. To run your programs, you might be clicking this run button, which works just fine, but the keyboard shortcut to run your program is just Control F11. If you have unsaved changes, it's going to prompt you to save them, but you can also have it automatically saved before it launches by just checking this box and hitting OK. From then on, even if you've made changes to your files when you hit Control F11, it'll automatically save them and run your program without prompting you. I almost always use the Control F11 shortcut to run my programs. We've gone over a ton of Eclipse shortcuts here, right? But you might be thinking, man, these are really useful, but how am I going to remember all these? There's so many. If you ever want to remind yourself what you can do or see even more shortcuts that we didn't go over, just hit Control Shift L and it'll show you every single Eclipse shortcut. I highly encourage you to look through all of these and see if there's any other shortcuts we didn't talk about that could be useful to you. And if you know about any useful Eclipse shortcuts that we didn't talk about in this video or that you happen to find in this list, please share them down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video or learned something, let me know by leaving a like. And as always, if you really want to support the channel, you can do the whole YouTube trifecta of leaving a like, a comment, and hitting the subscribe button so you don't miss each new Java tutorial. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.